Hello and welcome to another review of Camerata Action 66. These are 66 millimeter tall, little, slightly chibi characters. Uh, just a hint of chibi. This is 25, 26, 27, 28. We've got Camerata Chaser, Blade, Agito, and Sango. The best one in the lot, really. <laughs> um, and then Agito, and then Blade, and then Chaser. Chase looks way better than Chaser. Look please. Um, so yeah, I paint these aren't mine. These aren't from. These are something I I help my friend buy them because uh, uh, these go very quickly in Hong Kong, especially the rare ones. And the rare ones here is Sango and Agito right now in the stores. There's still quite a lot of Blade and Chasers left. If you go to the toy mall, you can probably still get a full set, but it's a bit pricey. And finally. Uh, the, yeah, the Sangos and Nagitos are completely gone from the candy stores. That's where you can get it at the pretty much the retail price. All the actual toy stores are gonna charge more for Sango and Agito. For example, in the Ultraman series in Wave 1, it got re-released and, and it was in Hong Kong. Usually a box of these is about $36, $39, uh, you know, in the in the candy stores and whatnot. The monster from the first Ultraman set is, is what people remember, the little giant crab monster. The point is everyone knows that one, everyone wants that one, and that's the rare one. It was $100, so it was already double in price, and these things aren't even you know, old, it was a reissue. So, so I, I, I imagine Sango and Agito's prices are going to be a, a, lot, a bit higher at least, at least probably 60 at least, and maybe 70 to 80 now, uh, compared to all the other ones. Because there's there's pretty big demand for them, and it's weird because that's the one everyone wants. They should have made Chaser the rare one because not I don't think that many people actually want that one. Uh, and well, at least people can get two of Chaser and two of Mark and make Mark Chase form. Uh, so yeah. Packaging is completely consistent with all the previous ones, so if you're the type of person who keeps all the boxes, you can display them all together, it should look pretty snazzy. And my friend still hasn't been able to get uh, a uh, normal Zengatsu, I think. Because that's also pretty well. I think he did find it eventually. No, no, I haven't filmed normal Zengatsu. No, he totally hasn't. Hmm. I can't remember. If I did, he has. If I didn't, he hasn't. Quick look at the back of the box uh, showing you. Um, yeah. You know what's inside and what poses you can do, and uh, like I said, I painstakingly removed the stickers on all of these. It was such a pain. The candy stores. That's that's one thing. The candy stores. Yes, that you can get it at a normal price, but they have these stickers on them, and these stickers do not come off easily. Uh, what I had to do was I had to peel them very slowly as much as I can without damaging the box and then I had to uh, get uh, like an eraser or rubber and just rub off the residue that's, that's one way to get off the remaining residue uh, you can also use uh, plastic sellotape and just quickly stick it on and then peel it off again but you know, you've got a slight chance of damaging the box uh, but uh, I did find with these boxes and I was able to remove a lot of the extra residue and then you can uh, close this back up again on the top there. So general information on one side and on this side. You just got uh, a little bit more information, a little bit more uh, posing. Inside all of these boxes, all the pieces come in this little baggie. Uh, you have um, one compartment with a whole little tray that has all the hands and stuff uh, molded into this bracket. Uh, one would be the head, one would be the body, and one would be this little plate that again they've changed the posing plate for these figures. And as always, you also get a generic piece of uh, fruit-flavored candy, just like all the other ones. Last thing to note before we move on to the figures is that uh, inside uh, each box, the inner layer of the box is the basic instruction and assembly guide for these figures. But you don't need it, but it is there for younger kids if they do. Anyway, let's move on to... First one here we have is uh, Chaser, and just take a look at this new stand. What it does is pretty much literally just plugs into the bottom of your feet, and I'm um, just going to do that now. You're going um, to plug into both feet, and I just push the feet off into the air. So there, you sort of have it like that, and it's just kind of awkward. It's not the best way to stand. Um, if you don't even remember, uh, the first release, the first waves, uh, they had a little black bar that goes plugs in both the back of the feet and in, and then later they added a bit extra plastic so they, they, the stand can hold more hands on it and then after that they released uh, these two bar like things, L-shaped bars that can plug, in, plug together uh, that 
they have a floor bar and actual standing bar in a, in a v-shape so they actually have a little stand to plug into the back of the figures these figures still have a little hole on the back so if you do have a Tumshi stage you can use them they are compatible a Tumshi stage is the ones that you use for say SH figure arts or Gundams and, and, and SIC figures and then finally they changed that stand again by molding two pieces of the same plastic that have a hole in the middle so it doesn't matter which way you plug them in you still get a somewhat stand which was still fine and it saves them money because it's the same mold so you got two pieces of plastic in a v-shape that can plug together to make a stand and have little holes in them to hold your uh, hands and stuff and then now they change it to this it's just like keep your mind just stop changing the bloody stands it was good when we had a v-shape bar uh, anyway, here's Chaser. You see, uh, the heart of these is that they still, even such a small size, such a kind of cheapy ish uh, look, they still manage to keep uh, compound eye effects. So that's pretty good. Uh, this is a bit deep for Chaser here, some of them are better than the others. And he's going to be coming off the stand, so uh, just a quick look at this stand. It's just literally a plate, and it has two fists on it. So that's what he has. He has two fists, uh, two open ish hands, and he does have the signal axe. It's made of really soft rubbery, uh, rubbery plastic, it's not painted whatsoever and his hand doesn't really hold it too well, I have to say um, I mean, it stays in there, which is important, I guess really um, but yeah, the Signal X looks literally like a smaller version of uh, a very detailed Signal X toy all the molds are there uh, so if you, if you want to spend some time painting this, you can make it look really good and you can see here, it's not really staying in his hands too well, depending on the pose, so it's going to be a bit of a pain. So, yeah, and aside from uh, my eyes, they also keep a lot of articulation. So, uh, up, down, so you've got a ball joint here, you can rotate a little bit. A uh, ball joint, a torso, and you see here, this one isn't the uh, tightest one. Look, it's it's a bit loose, so I'm going to have to use some super glue or something to uh, smear around the edge, let it dry, and then plug him back on. Hopefully, he should be a bit tighter. Uh, shoulder pads are molded into the top arm, we've got a ball joint here, a uh, rotating joint here, a uh, single joint there, and a rotating joint for the hands, and they are pegs. And ball joint up top of the leg, uh, one single joint here, and a ball joint for the bottom of the feet. And it has a little bit of extra cut so they can rotate their feet a bit to inside towards them. His, uh, Horns, by the way, are also very soft, rubbery plastic. Yeah, this axe is starting to really annoy me. You're supposed to be able to hold him, hold it like that, and he should be able to. There we go. That's that's the way you're supposed to pose him. And uh, yeah, so more detail on him is pretty good. Uh, the the chaser driver is also decent enough. Looking on the on the oops, on the side there you can see for the most part these aren't painted on the back however he does have the helmet paint go all the way around the back and the shoulder plate paints are enough he also has the logo printed there which is somewhat hard to see in certain angles but it's good that it's there at least and uh, the morning detail on the back is still decent it still has a little tire thing on there uh, so yeah the paint on the back is very minimal so Hmm. I mean, the overall look on him for one of these chibi characters is absolutely fine. Um, and they can, you see, you can stand on their own. But that 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 stage thing just really annoys me. Why do I have to change it again and make it worse? Next, we have Blade or Blade or <laughs> Japanese Blade, I like to say. Uh, comes with two fists again. And a crappy stage. He does have his blade sword. Um, and there he is. Let's try and stand him. And. Uh, yeah, he's uh, lacking in a lot of paint. All he has is uh, green and silver. The body plastic is blue and the eyes are sort of you know, transparent red there, but he, he doesn't have other paint details there really. Um, Chaser did have silver, purple, light blue and, and black painted on him. He, he only has pretty much, apart from that one dot of green, just silver. But again, uh, his articulation is just pretty much the same decent uh, and again just like Chaser his uh, torso ball joint is a bit loose um, however apart from the joints uh, his overall molding details is pretty good um, paint missing on the back hand the inside of the hands that's really annoying and um, you didn't even paint all of his horn or there's nothing really on the back apart from the shoulder pads uh, so he's missing a lot a lot of paint Especially on the belt buckle, that, that's missing so much, but um, that's what you expect from money, so chibi characters. 
And as for the sword, again, it's just a s single piece of black plastic. It has the cards permanently uh, pulled out. So he can do the card choosing thing. And uh, he holds the sword a lot better than Chaser holds his. Um, however, under, under certain angles, it still can get a bit loose. And uh, the overall size and shape of this thing is still decent, even though it's a slightly chibi sort of shape. Okay, so also comes with the extra fist, in fact, they all do. Um, he also comes with the extra face horn plate for his uh, rider kick. And so there he is. And uh, his, his horns are kind of annoying because they were also in the box, they were also attached to uh, a uh, sort of a uh, plastic bracket. So uh, you can see here, uh, you really need to have some like nail clippers and just file these down, and um, you'll get the cut in the paint because that's where the plastic cuts and the gold is painted onto the plastic and it's not molded into it. He's got gold, silver and a light metallic blue painted on him. And again, look at that, loose loose torso. All of them have this problem. I don't know why, what's going on? Um, and again, his inside arms are not painted, so this gold paint just sort of ends just a little bit. So there's a bit of missing paint there. Oh, that's probably the joint. Mm. No, no, I'm not impressed. So I'm just going to rotate his hand. So apart from the fist hands, on him are the uh, oh, 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 kicking and henshin hands. <laughs> uh, his belt is actually painted okay. Like they did put the main in Portita. He, he actually has a painted belt for one thing compared to the other ones. Apart from that. Mm. And again, the back is not painted at all. He doesn't have the shoulder pads painted unlike the other two. They just sort of like, fuck it. Uh, whoops, <laughs> and uh, sod it, and uh, they just sort of end the pain, I'm like, well, what, what, what the hell, you know, just, I mean, the other guys have it, why doesn't he, so, uh, let's just swap this in, just so you can see the uh, other helmet, ah, <laughs> he's, he's looks, he looks kind of, he looks actually really creepy, without the, uh, horns there, um, let's, yeah, plug that in, it does swap pretty easily, uh, the horns are softish plastic, so uh, I wouldn't be scared of snapping these at all, so, Plug that in, and he's ready for his uh, rider kick. If I can kind of. Oops, his hand fell off. It's uh, actually a little bit hard to get him in the correct uh, rider kick pose because his torso is so loose, um, and the way the belt is shaped, he might actually uh, spin his body back around. So that's, that's kind of annoying. Finally, uh, Zango has these two flat open hands. As well as the fists that are attached to his body, and there he is. And again, with the uh, you know the loose torso, it's really annoying. Uh, he doesn't really have any accessories, so one would hope that he's the best made out of the lot. And he does look pretty good at, in first glance. Um, this arm here, the inner arm, actually had a bit of extra plastic stuck on it from the you know from. Uh, cutting it from the from the injection. I've removed it now, but it did stop this arm from turning. Now it's a little bump there, which um, is actually very useful. For, um, a little bump, a little click there, so actually very useful for, po for posing purposes. Uh, his paint is really nice. His details are not so much. He seems a bit faded in some areas. He does have the little chains attached to him. He does have a little golden scarf, so that's good. His helmet's painted all the way around, thank God, and so are his feet. Uh, and the helmet does look pretty nice, however the compound eyes are pretty hard to see through that foggy plastic. He's got blue, silver, red, and darker silver, and gold, so, uh, and metallic blue, so one, two, three, let's see, no, 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 wait, wait, the belt is one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's got six different paints on him, and that's, that's good, that's where the money went, because he doesn't have any accessories. And this is belt us up, but no. His torso is just so play loose. I don't know why is this for all these ones? It's really annoying. Um, but apart from that, he does look pretty good. I mean, Sango, there's not going to be too many ways of getting this figure. Uh, there's SH figure arts coming out. There's him. And there's also the, uh, the, 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 uh, the HG special release for Kamada GP. Um, his horns are also very soft plastic, so I wouldn't worry too much about snapping them. And there he is on the back. And with no paint whatsoever on the back of the body, and that's really annoying. So there you go. Uh, this wave isn't that great. The loose torso hip joints and the terrible stands, they just... Uh, um, 
Yeah, I, I'm not really in, that impressed with this wave, but that's probably also due to the fact that it's been quite a few waves out, out now, so uh, I'm, I'm over the initial, oh cool, these are kind of cool new things. Uh, so that that's going for it. Um, yeah, this great this 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 set is so so. Uh, really, the highlight. If if you if you've been collecting them, of course you're gonna have to get this because you know you're gonna have to complete your Heisei Riders. Uh, Sango is still pretty cool. Uh, I do like Sango the most out of the whole pack, and um, Chaser is not really important to me because uh, he's not the first rider. He's not even the second rider. He's like the third or fourth form. If you already have Chase, then you can probably skip him. Uh, but the other ones. They are needed just to complete the set. If you have not been collecting these so far, I do say skip these because this, unless you really like the look of these and you intend to getting all of these, which would be really hard to do these days because all the old sets are completely out of stock. Uh, the first wave is okay because it got reissued and there's, there's a bit of that going around. But uh, everything after 4, so 5 to 20 to 20, uh, 20 and all that, are uh, going to be hard to find the, the rare ones because that's how they get packed in the box. One of them is always rare. So uh, if you want to collect a full set, you're late. <laughs> it's going to be really hard to do that. However, if you've been collecting them for a while now, then you should be okay. For everyone else, I'd probably just say, just, I don't know, find something else, I guess, to collect and instead of these. Uh, they're not... They always look kind of cool at first until you mess around with them and look, take a closer look. And then you're like, oh, well, that's kind of sucky. It's kind of missing this, missing that. And for those who, 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 for you who like chibi statues, there's a whole line of that. It's just chibi statues. So you can get the chibi statues instead. If you want something that's a lot of fun to play with and mess around, these don't even fill that criteria because um, joints are still somewhat limited. Uh, they have done a good job giving them as many joints as possible in this size, but I, I just feel that they're very limited and they don't feel like such a toyish thing and they don't feel like something that I can just give to a kid for example and just let them mess around with it. Uh, for those I'd give them soft finals, yeah there's no accessories and nothing with the soft finals but they can just roughly mess around with these. I don't feel like I can roughly mess around with these. So yeah, uh, when this came out I was like oh yeah I kind of want Sango too but then the shop ran out of Sango. And I was like, oh, fine, I'm not going to get that then. And then after that, after messing around with this copy from my friends, um, I don't really, I'm not really bothered getting any more of these. If someone gives me one, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll put it in my office. If, uh, But I'm not going to go out and buy any of these on my own. Uh, especially for the price. It's not expensive, but it's not cheap either. It's about 40 Hong Kong dollars. And if the rare ones in the toy shop are going to cost more, then it's just not really that worth it. The, the, the feel of it isn't just isn't really there. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button, subscribe button, and also take a look at the Patreon page, and uh, I'll appreciate that a lot. My predictions for the next four sets would be, uh, of course, you got the Hibiki and Kiva, those are the remaining main Heisei Riders that have not yet been released. The third one, I would guess, is Ghost, because coming out of Ghost is out now, and of course, the newest rider would get a, get a spot there. And as for the fourth one, um, if, if Spectre comes along before they release it, then the Spectre would be in there. If not, I predict X, because Kamarada X has been appearing in a lot of all these random uh, Kamarada toys for a while now, so I wonder what's going on there. Plus, uh, it makes sense for another show rider, just one show rider to pop up in all these sets. So yeah, that's my prediction. I wonder if I'm right. If I'm right, I don't get anything. Hooray. <laughs> so, um... Yes, you can also check out my other camera, the 66mm uh, reviews, which I've been much more generous to because they were still really fresh and new. So you can check out those out if you want. Another camera, the fig arts, toys, and all that good stuff. Most importantly, take care, have a nice day. I'll see you soon. Bye bye now.